Hi, welcome to the Whiskey Chicks podcast. My name is Amy. And I am Amy's sister, Susie. We are going to be talking to you about Whiskey Chicks. You may ask yourself, what in the world is a Whiskey Chick? Well, it's a term our Nana, our grandmother, used to describe anything and everything, like a doodad or a thingamajig. For our purposes today, Amy and I have framed Whiskey Chicks as those random moments in life that accumulate over time that compel us to grow, learn, and evolve. Whether it's good, bad, ugly, funny, or sad, with each whiskey chick comes a lesson, an aha moment, a lotus blooming from the mud and muck, resulting in wisdom and healing. Whiskey chicks have brought us both to a place in our lives where we love ourselves and speak our truths. The last thing Nana said to me before she passed on was, be true to yourself, little A. That was the nickname she had for me. The angel spoke straight through her in that moment, and I knew I had quite a journey ahead of me. It was that whiskey chick, the last whiskey chick she delivered, that set me off on an incredible growth journey. She is the force behind this creative endeavor. We dedicate every whiskey chick to her. We're grateful you're here. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Whiskey Chicks podcast. I'm Susie. And I'm Amy. And we're back for some more chat, chat, chat. We got a good one for you today. <laughs> I'm what? I'm excited about this one because we love to say that shift happens, and there's been some a lot of shifty stuff going on in the last week. And it's so, going to continue to go on for a little yeah, while. A long while. So, uh, but yeah, this, this topic actually, I feel has uh, a huge amount of significance for, I think, uh, humanity, global humanity. And if we all just, you know, tune in and realize what's actually going on swirling around above us. But so what we're going to talk about today is Pluto moving from Capricorn to Aquarius, So, um, Pluto has been in Capricorn since 2008, and now it has moved into the sign of Aquarius, which has not happened for, what did we say, 250 years? Yeah, it's like 250 years, you know, Pluto being the smallest planet furthest from the sun. um, It takes 250 years to traverse the entire zodiac. So, now that it's made its full circle, it was, it's yeah, it's been about 250 years. It changes sign every 20 years or so that's so crazy to think about i mean like visually a planet just being like la di da gonna take my time (laughs) exactly it's the smallest (laughs) you know it's the smallest planet but it's it's super powerful but it you know these these planets that are so far away from the sun um you know whenever they exert their their influence or their power it it, yeah it can have in individual influences but it usually um impacts the collective or like a certain birth generation because it moves so slow um every 20 years or so many people will be born with pluto under the same sign so it's not like the moon that changes signs every two days right so it's um it's a little different yeah but i you know last time Pluto was in Aquarius, I think the years, I think it was around the French Revolution or something, just to like give people like a gauge of how freaking long ago that was. You say 250 years, but you think about the difference between now and then, then also like what's going on, like, you know, with humanity during those times, like that was the revolution days. And, um, you know, now it's like, I feel like we're in a place where, we really have a lot of opportunities to realize like where we're all at right now as a race on the mm-hmm. planet and are the things that we do and the impact that they have on the planet the- itself, mother earth and you know, the people around us and how we interact with each other. I mean, 250 years ago, there was no texting going on um, or anything like that. But uh You know, Pluto is, represents transformation, um, death, which 
essentially is a rebirth, the death of something. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's, I don't know. I, this is just like huge. I, I'm, I'm having trouble finding words cause I feel it is actually so, so significant that this is happening like within our lifetime. Cause I think Pluto will not, um, make another big shift until like 2043. 2044. 2044. Okay. Yeah. We'll still be alive, God willing. <laughs> Hopefully. We'll <laughs> still be here. We'll still be here whisk a chicken away. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so with a with a with a with Pluto, whatever sign it's sitting in, you have to kind of look at the themes around that sign. So, it came from Capricorn. And, you know, Capricorn is a very structured sign, right? So if we look at what what's happened over the last 20 years or so, I mean, it Capricorn Capricorn's all about like testing boundaries and um government and structure and um rebuilding structures, exposing things. You know, let's think about what happened over the last 20 years, even in just the last 10 years with the pandemic. And all of the po- political stuff. I mean, we went through some major testing of the boundaries, I think, and some major collapses as well, especially in the last, you know, five years or so. Um, so now we're moving into Aquarius, which is a more humanitarian position for Pluto. So Pluto is going to ask us. If it's all about death, regeneration, rebirth, it's going to ask us to pause and start to, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Kind of, kind of overhaul what Capricorn was testing, if you will, from a yeah, humanitarian me, perspective. Because to me, like Capricorns and I, I, like the word achievement comes to mind when I think of Capricorns and they are very, like you say, you know, they're very steadfast and I have many Capricorns in my life and they are very stubborn and set in their ways, but they also like, they get stuff done. Like, you know, they, that's what they do. And I think the focus moving out of Capricorn into Aquarius puts us more in like a, a headspace of like, you know, more towards like, um, creating, ease and more like people oriented stuff right you know uh and you know potentially shifting power from away from like i don't know um what am i trying to say here um like focusing on one like thing or person that like has influence over and it's more like a global like group thing more connectivity with with people more about community yes community mm-hmm. and um the majority of people and you know maybe what they see happening for the greater good of humanity so to speak so we may also start to see a, a real influx in science in science and innovations inventions progress toward cures for things. I mean, those are all themes around Aquarius. So um, it'll be an, an, an interesting time. And on a personal level, um, Aquarius and Pluto are, are they're, they're testing us to ask the question about what our life purpose is. So going back to the Dharma, um, it's time to kind of break down structures and start over and that includes like on a personal level too definitely i don't know about i don't know about you and everybody else out there but i didn't even know this until i came across it i was reading something about the 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 pluto move into aquarius and i have been on i i have like i've made this shift because shift happens where i am detaching from things I have no desire to shop. I have no desire to, I'm cleaning out closets. I'm like, I don't need this. I don't need this. I don't need this. I'm simplifying. 
Um, so it's, it's really interesting because I was, you know, in reading up about this movement of Pluto into Aquarius, um, one of the themes is having things quote unquote will have less importance and people are going to have the need to have, um, less, less, less things that they're attached to. Yeah. Agreed. I mean, I've been, I just took like a huge bag to donate today because I was just like, I haven't used it in a year. Get rid of it. Haven't looked at that, considered that just like, like physically like getting rid of things that aren't, I don't want to say serving me, but that I just don't use. They just don't have, they're taking up space, Mm -hmm. space that I could free up for, for other things, you know? So that, that feels really good. It's, it's a type of cleansing for sure. But, um, you know, I would encourage people, what, sorry, go ahead. No, I was going to say, I would, I would encourage people if, if when we talk about the Dharma and stuff and what's funny is when we recorded that podcast, I had no idea like this Pluto thing was going to happen. Me neither. Like, I know just like to actually go back and listen to that episode and use some of the tools that we linked up there to go and into your natal chart and find out like maybe where Pluto sits you know, in your chart. And, um, cause it's, it's all like, it's all incredibly significant, especially if you're someone that's just been kind of like, you know, ebbing and not really having feelings about like forward movement in your life or feeling very stagnant. I mean, that's oftentimes the universe or your angels or guides poking at you to kind of get your shit together and pay attention there, you know? So anyway, yeah, no, there's, it, it's, it's, it's just a time to reevaluate everything relationships. It's a time of starting over. It's a time of really looking at what you need versus what you want. So it now's the time to blow shit up. <laughs> <laughs> the urge to purge. The urge to purge. But That's if right. you want to, if you want to take a look at like how it's going to impact you personally. Um, a couple of podcasts ago, maybe Susie can put the link back in to this one. Um, if you pull up your chart, astro.com, um, you can find where uh, Aquarius, which house or which part of your chart Aquarius sits in. And then that's that's the that's where it's going to have the biggest impact for you personally. And then of course, if there are other planets within that house, if any of you have looked at your astrological chart, it looks like a big pie chart with 12 sections. And those sections are called houses. You can look at other planets that might be there. My third, my Aquarius is in my third house and it just happens to be empty. So it's just about, um, the, the theme of that house. Uh, but if if you go to astro.com and you pull up your chart, if you need help with interpretation, they offer something called um, Astro Click Portrait that where you can go around and click and it'll give you um, explanations and interpretations of what Aquarius and X house would mean. Or you can just Google it, you know, if you find your placement. But that's if you're if you're so inclined, that's a great way to kind of uh, see how it might personally impact you um because it's gonna you know pluto's gonna be there for a little while hovering in that section of your chart wherever aquarius is i mean you could google (laughs) at least i feel like i'm we're saying google a lot you can you can (laughs) look up on the world wide web if you put in the search bar you could look up uh if you just put in like the pluto shift of 2024 you're gonna get like a barrage of articles and things to read about and the significance of it. And I found a few sites today that were specific to like um, paragraphs on each Zodiac sign and how they were going to be affected by, you know, what were, what this Pluto shift means. And, you know, it's, it's like, I, I really, I really focus on this transformative death rebirth thing. And just with, you know, kind of 
how the world has been for the last, well, let's just say since 2008, because it kind of feels like it's been that long of the, the things that we, we see and hear about every day that are going on in the world um, in the news. And I, I know Amy and I, we're not big news watchers because, and that's not an act of irresponsibility. It's because it, it just, it really brings us down. Like yeah. we're very, we're very, very affected by it. And so I have to really take things in, in small doses, but I mean, we all know, you know, it's just, there are things going on where it's, it's like, you have to wonder as a human race, like what the hell is happening and why? you know, is this, there this increase in it. And, uh, you know, I mean, I feel like this Pluto thing, I think the, that it's happening now in January and where you look at the winter time and it's like, you know, nothing's dead. It's just sleeping, right. It's hibernating. It's, it's just chilling until, you know, it's time to rebloom and grow and the sun returns and the days are longer and everybody's happier. So I feel like this is a really good time before spring comes to really embrace like what this Pluto thing could mean for you. And I'm not saying go out and change your whole life and, you know, all that crap. I'm just saying like, take, take a hard look at your life and yourself. And if there's things that you don't like about yourself, things you want to change about your life, like, we're being handed like these windows and doors to just peek out and walk through and they're, they're gifts. They're truly gifts. Yeah. And you know, just whatever, whatever's calling you, it might be something super simple. It might be something more um, impactful or uh, life changing. But like I said, if, if you've been feeling the need to just simplify your life over the last few weeks, clean stuff out and just feeling the need to detach, you're, you're, you're feeling the effect of all this just organically, you know? So, but whatever you're called to do, you know, if you're tuning into it. So, um, but it, Pluto's tasking you to act on it. It's time, it's time to act essentially. Pluto will roll back into Capricorn. Um, I think around, um, September 1st ish, it's going to back into Capricorn. Then it'll go back to Aquarius in November and stay there for 20 years. But when it does that, it's going to kind of bring up some of those Capricorn. It's going to test us, right? Because it's, we're going to, it feels like we're going to go back in time a little bit and go, whoa, you know, um, we don't want to do, we don't want to be there anymore. We've already moved forward with X, Y, Z. So, um, let's stay there, but it's gonna, it's gonna ask us to, it's going to test us a little bit, you know, whatever, whatever forward mo momentum or movement we've been, um, having between now and the first of September will be tested for a few months and then it'll go, and then Pluto will go back into Aquarius for, um, the remainder of the 20 years. So, um, stay in tune with it. That's kind of, that's kind of cool that it does that kind of dips back and then goes forward. I mean, it's a, it's a little, I mean, I remember being in school and studying the solar system, not knowing, you know, as a fourth grader, <laughs> what that would mean as an adult, you know, to us now spiritually, you know, or yet I'm like, I have no artistic talent. I can't make that stupid, you know, model where all the planets are and <laughs> all it, like, the styrofoam moves, balls. Moves around, yeah, moves around the, the non eco friendly. It was like a messed up, stupid little mobile. I was mobile. I was trying to make, you know, yep. but, yep. um, but, but, you know, Pluto's always been like this little afterthought when we talk about the solar system, because you, you focus on, you know, the bigger planets or, you know, the ones we're more familiar with, like Uranus, just kidding. Um, but, uh, you know, just I've heard that pronounced Uranus and yes. Uranus, Uranus. I heard Uranus the other day. I was like, Hmm, that's a new one. I don't know. I don't know what's correct. Cause Uranus is just. That just sounds weird. <laughs> well, hey, you know, I mean, the, next just time, like... the next time someone goes, potato, potato, go Uranus, Uranus. <laughs> 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 there you go. Let's call the whole thing off. Yeah. But, you know, now you now you think of this tiny little planet that's like what? way far away from the sun that's just, you know, having these this really impactful 
historical movement in the solar system. It's it's kind of cool to think about. Yeah, and then and then adding fuel to the fire is the full moon tomorrow. Um, so we're really getting hit with it right now, you know. And we all know we've talked about before. I believe full moons are also about uh, releasing endings, making way for new beginnings. I mean, every time we go through a full moon, um, we're asked if it's if we would like to release something. You know, it's always a good time to to l- let go of things. So, um, which is right in alignment with the the whole Pluto thing. But tomorrow's full moon is going to be in Leo. And in astrology talk, it's opposing in the sky. The moon is actually opposing Pluto. And an opposition is a really, really tough uh, aspect. It means the two planets are 180 degrees apart from each other and energetically it's a tug of war. So you've got Pluto, you know, death, rebirth, you know, beginning generation. You've got the full moon in Leo, beginnings, endings, that sort of thing. So if I had to put one simple phrase on top of all that is it's time to let go. That the next couple of days. Stop talking and worrying. (laughs) It's it's time to let go, let go of the rope and fall on your ass. No, um, but that's kind of like, uh, that's kind of like the theme, but Leo is about the heart too. So look at themes around the heart and letting go. Um, so yeah, it's going to be next couple of days are going to be interesting. So if you're feeling kind of woolly and wonky, you're feeling the, the energies of all this. You're feeling the tug of war. You might feel really dark and shadowy, like you just want to be by yourself in a in a room. You don't want to talk to anybody. Um, you know, it's really good for doing um, your soul purpose work, like we mentioned before. But now we're being asked to stop thinking about it and planning and taking notes and that sort of thing and just really becoming it if that makes sense. We want to internalize that sole purpose and and become it and stop thinking about it. Get out of the head and into the heart. That's kind of what it, that this, this is also asking of us as well. That might be hard for you Virgos out there. Just kidding. I'm a Virgo. I have five I know. planets in Virgo. That's why I said it. <laughs> Amy's always been a lot more, um, I want to say practical, pragmatic. Same thing. They're synonymous. Is it the same thing? Oh, maybe yeah. pragmatic. Maybe pragmatic sound- is the 75 cent word and practical is like the 25 cent word. <laughs> oh, well, good thing. At least I had a dollar out of it. <laughs> um, a buck's no, a buck. <laughs> you, you've always been like the, I don't know. You're more, I don't want to say grounded, but know, we're we're different in, in good ways. But, you know. I'm very earth. I have so much earth in my chart. It's frightening. Very You're earthy, grounded. very earthy. I'm, I'm fiery, <laughs> but um. <laughs> anyway, yeah. I mean, you know, talking about, I feel like in the last six months, like a lot of stuff is not ironically. It's all very timely, like coming up about all these things about um spiritual, uh, your life's purpose, why we're here, blah blah blah. And I, I encourage people, I was sitting in the break room, uh, yesterday at work and, uh, a a coworker, I didn't even know her name. I was like, by the way, what's your name? And then she said her name and she was talking about, oh, no, I'm sorry. She had a a t-shirt that was uh, a picture of the tarot card for the moon. And Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, does that tarot card? Or tarot. <laughs> does that potato, potato? Yeah, Uranus, Uranus. Uranus. <laughs> I'm like, does that tarot card like resonate with you? And so we got to talking and and stuff like that. And so I we we ended up sitting there, and uh, she was telling me like her 
her signs, her sun and moon and rising and all that. And I said, yeah, but have you heard about the North Node? She's like, no, what's that? So I literally like I pulled up Astro.com on my phone <laughs> and took her information. And I was like, you're a whatever. I forgot what it was. You're a whatever sort North Node and a blah, 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 South Node. And I think she was a, a Virgo North Node, actually. Mm, interesting. I think so. But um Anyway, and then she was like, my sister's also on it. And then like five minutes later, she was at her locker. She's like, my sister agrees with you. And I'm like, well, looks like maybe we use the same site. But a lot of people are like really getting into this whole like, it's not, it's not like for recreation. Like for me, this is, I, I mean, re- I don't want to say religion because it's spiritual, but you know, I, I look at myself in the mirror and I think I, I am a soul wrapped in this meat suit. Like my meat, my, my <laughs> physical, <laughs> my physical body is just the, the ride for the soul in this life. But the soul, it, it, it has so much purpose in the life that it's in. And it's been in however many lives prior to this, bringing the karma to help with the Dharma. And it's this really amazing story that just gets put together. And it's all the foundation of all that is your natal chart. That's like your, your baseline map blueprint. It's literally Mm -hmm. your map of your life. I can't reiterate how freaking cool all of this is. And the more people read about it, the more they come back to me and they're like, Oh my God, they learn so much about themselves by taking like five minutes to read something about it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's about connection with self and soul and, you know, not denying feelings you're having about like, gosh, why do I like painting so much? I'm like, well, maybe you're an artist, like tap into that. Like you're not, as you like to say, Amy, nothing just happens, you know? Yeah. And I, and I think too, um, I think people, many people are finding that the, um, what's the word? More and more people are looking to kind of more esoteric methods of health, nutrition, spirituality, life path. I mean, the, the, the stuff we've been leaning on for so long isn't it's kind of the logical stuff. The black and white stuff isn't working anymore. I think more and more people are looking to uh, the metaphysical and spirituality and uh, tarot, tarot, or um <laughs> <laughs> their their chart and there's another there's another thing out there that I'm kind of getting into is called human design that chart it combines astrology i ching and something else that's fascinating too i would encourage anybody to kind of get online and and look at human design it's called it's like a whole other way to look at your is that a whole other podcast that's a whole other podcast we have to say um, it sorry yeah well had to but anyway i i mean my point is i think people are looking toward they're feeling that need to like, why am I on this planet? And an encyclopedia or Google or, you know, whatever, Siri, there's no encyclopedias anymore. It would be Siri, I guess. You know, they they can't answer that question, right? So people are looking to more avenues like astrology. And so this is a, this would be a really cool time to look into it a little deeper because this is a really transformational once every 20 year type of scenario. And, um, it might be a good way if you're not already looking at your chart to start looking at it, you know, to, to where's your Pluto, you know, or where's Aquarius, you know? So, um, but yeah, I think more and more people are starting to kind of think outside the box as far as what to do with my life. Who I, who am I, what am I made of? Uh, what am I meant to do? Um, all of that. Definitely. I mean, if you read the four agreements, you'll see that we are the stars and the light between the stars. We're all connected. That's right. I wish people would really, really focus on that. There'd probably be a lot less road rage and a lot more love in the world, less violence and anger and reactivity, you know, 
people feeling like they've been wronged instead of seeing the the bigger picture of what's actually happening. And again, we say it at, at, at nauseum, I'm going to say it, you know, things happen for you, not to you. Like just mm-hmm. start reframing your mind to, to think that way. It's not, nothing is a personal attack against you. Yeah. You know, so it is about, it's funny, uh, years ago, um, I live in the Pacific Northwest and obviously around a lot of beautiful places I can go out in nature. And, uh, I used to, I used to go disc golfing a lot with my dog and, uh, there's this one park we would go to that has a, 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 a beautiful viewpoint over like this river. And I would just stand there and watch the water flowing and thinking, I mean, that's just pure energy, right? It's a, a river to me. Ocean's kind of different because, you know, the waves just kind of back and forth ebb and flow. But like when you watch a river moving in a direction and then you see like, you know, there's boulders popping out of the river or a tree or, you know, maybe if it rains or it doesn't rain, like the size of the river changes, but the water always finds its way around the obstacles and it keeps going and flowing. Even though there are areas of ebb, you know, you can even watch an ebb move forward too. But like, I just, I I, I find something very hypnotic and symbolic about just like staring at a river and just thinking like, and I don't mean this to sound corny, but that is life to me. Yeah, That's the water like always finds life. its way. Yeah. You know? So I think it's just really significant, but that was very no. spiritual for me there. Pardon me. Flow, challenges, <sighs> obstacles. The water always finds its way, you know, and it's and it's energy. It's all energy. Everything has energy and we're all connected to that energy. So um it's, no, like watching a, it's like watching a tree like blowing in the wind, you know, even if a tree bends to the point where it snaps and breaks, even if the tree like falls over on the ground and the roots are showing and all that, a whole nother ecosystem like forms on the tree, like life just keeps going. It, 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 it keeps going with what it has and it adapts to the changes that are happening around it. Like nature is a perfect example of that. And if people would just put down their phones and take a minute to realize the significance of all that. I mean, they might feel some more peace because I do. <laughs> Sorry. I got really sappy there for a second, but I mean it. No pun like, intended. I really mean it. Yeah. Oh my <laughs> God. The tree. <laughs> oh my God. You made a funny. Though you did on accident. Well, no, but you, <laughs> I didn't get the joke, but you made the joke. All right. I, prov- I provided the tree. You provided the sap. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, yep. So anyway. just to kind of tie, you know, Susie's story and kind of everything together. <laughs> Susie's you know, this- rant. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you're the I, Virgo. No. <laughs> let me bring it. Let me rein Susie back in. <laughs> let me put a bow on it. Yeah. No. Um, so this this new movement now in Aquarius, again, is asking us to be more about community and connectedness. So, you know, I, I think let's just kind of try to frame it that way, you know, less attachment to things, less ego, and more about the soul, the soul's purpose and what we need rather than what we want. Um, utilizing resources more efficiently and consciously. I mean, it's all, it's really all about that. You know, so, um, and Less heal, expectations healing too. expectations. Yep. Those are stop, never good. Stop, stop having expectations. You're going to live a shit life if you do that. Yeah. Expectations just set you up for anger, frustration. Um, you're yeah. going to have a, you're going to have a soul ache. <laughs> <laughs> live a life of expectations and you know what you know i can say that because that's the only life i lived up until about five or six years ago mm-hmm. but yep, again but again that came from our domestication right and, and so you can't lay expectations on the universe you can let the universe know your wishes but then you have to surrender and, and just accept what comes your way because whatever comes your way will be for your highest good, whether you know it or not. So, 
um, laying expectations out there just slows things down for you. Oh, oh, that's a, you know, I say that now whenever I am having a chat with the universe is that I, I used to be like, I want this and I want that, la la la. And now I'm just like, you know, this would be really rad, but really, I just want whatever's for my highest good. Like, whatever you, whatever you see that to be. Like, yeah. I'm in, you know, and just in, and, and in the right time, too. Yeah. Right. I mean, it that it may be for you at some point, but on the universe's time schedule. And then so. we can sum it up by saying everybody needs to just take a chill pill because here's another prolific statement. A whisk What's a meant, chick. A whisk a chick. What's <laughs> meant for you will not pass you by. That's right. Dun, dun, dun. So, should, we, should, we, should we assign the homework and end it there? Yeah, let's That's do it. That's what I'm feeling. So you got you got some homework? Yeah, I'm thinking here. I'm thinking that <laughs> the I think the homework should be everybody everybody um well those those who are so inclined go to astro.com if you don't already have your natal chart and find where Aquarius is on your chart and dig into that just a little bit just to kind of see how it would personally impact you. Um and if you are a lover of crystals, put your crystals out to charge tomorrow for the full moon. That's a good point. I got to do that. That's all. Well, so just start I, there. I will say uh, once again that astro.com is completely free. You can mm -hmm. create a free account. Um, all you need to know is your date of birth, your place of birth, and your time of birth, which is actually really important. And, uh, then, you know, you can, it's, it's, it is some work and research, but it's worth it. I will link up the, the site or the link. I will link up the link. I'll put the link for Astro. Oh my God. I sound so Linkety technically, link link. I sound so technically savvy and I'm not. And then I just sound like a dipshit sometimes. I will link up. <laughs> I will put the link for astro.com <laughs> in the in the uh in the episode uh for the podcast. You guys will see it there. Link it up. Uh Boy, anyway, link it up. We just want to thank you once again for being here with us. We are grateful uh for all the listeners and uh which have extended across the world now. Pretty yeah, proud to say that. Chicks is international. We are in a, internationally listened to. So we're that we, just we we want to call out and thank our listeners in Greece. Greece. The Netherlands. Spain. Argentina. Yep. Spain, Spain and Hungary of all places. And wow. And then of course all all the US all yeah. the stateside folks. All of our US peeps. But you know, we're we're so humbled and grateful by this whole thing. We're letting this happen very organically. So, you know, we're just we're just happy to be here. And this is our dharma, so we know we're doing the right thing. And the universe is responding. La la la. Anyway, <laughs> everybody have a beautiful uh what was I gonna say? Pluto. Pluto twenty years. <laughs> Enjoy the Leo full moon. <laughs> Enjoy the Leo full moon. Take a breath. And uh we all know what old Nana would say. Be true to yourself.